Hello, this is Hellbent, and welcome to part two of my variable tutorial. Uh, we're just going to continue on from where we had left off in the first video, and this is going to introduce us to our two basic ways of declaring variables. The first one is with an equal sign operator, and we're just going to be using um, simple characters to name our variables just to keep the time down and uh, make this as simple as possible to follow. So we're not going to be naming our variables things that we should be naming them normally. So, And we had gone over that in the naming your variables part. Okay, so we're just going to use things like A, B, and C. So in this case here, what we're going to do is, so we have our name now. And then we're going to say it equals, and anything on the right side of this equal sign is going to be basically stored as a string or a literal thing. So it could be hello. Oh. It could be, let's go, B. It could be one, two, three. It could be. anything anything that we want but even though our variable B is storing this as a number we can't manipulate this because it's stored as the character 1 the character 2 the character 3 which is different than the other way we're going to be looking at of storing it as an expression where we can manipulate its value as a number like we can do mathematical operations whereas with this we can't do any mathematical operations so um, the next thing we'll do is I guess we'll just print it out so the way we're gonna print out our variables and because these guys here are all just strings there's really we can only do the one way so when we want to print out our variable the first thing we're gonna do here in this case is we're just gonna say a equals and this is just literally going to put the text A equals. Just so that way we can see what's going on with uh, with our variables. And in order to actually display our variable, we're going to put a percentage sign around the name of our variable. So in this case, we have the variable A. Now, if we were used going back to our naming thing, we could also do, I'll copy that. If we were going to be using proper names, we would put the proper name in between the percentage signs. Okay. But our variable is A. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to introduce the new, new line character. And this is going to create a drop our next line or the thing the next that we thing that we print out. It's going to be on the line below that one. So this will make it more readable for us. B equals percent b percent and then we'll do another new line character and c equals percent c percent we'll go ahead and save it and print this out and there we have it so a equals hello b equals one two three and c equals hello one two three okay very simple we will just comment this out and move on to now our ex way of declaring as expressions with the colon equals operator okay so we've seen how to declare something as a string now what we want is we want to actually be able to manipulate the values through mathematical operations. So the way we declare functions here is we're just going to use the same names again. But this time, instead of just equals, we're going to do colon equals. And now instead of storing a string, we're going to store an integer or a float. We can store strings as well, but you'll see that in a second. So I'm going to put the number 1, 2, 3, B, uh, we'll use a we we'll use a float for this one and then see if we do want to use a string in this case what we have to do is we have to put it inside of quotes 
And there's two ways now that we can present our message box. We'll do the same ways we did the last time first. So we got message box and a equals percent percent new line character b equals percent percent new line character c equals and then we'll just fill in the values so c b and a and we'll just print this out to see what we got okay and as you can see it's the exact same as we had before except if we go back now if we were to because we've declared this as an expression if we were to get rid of this percentage sign I mean these quotes what we're basically going to be telling it is that C equals the variable hello and in our case the variable hello doesn't exist so when it goes to print it out it's going to initialize it and it's just going to store a, gar a garbage value into it so basically it's going to store nothing into it so when we print it out it's not going to have any value that we can see so if we do that we we see c equals nothing because hello doesn't have any value now what we can also do for C is we can say a plus B and now what it's going to do is it's actually going to add 1 2 3 plus 3.14159 3 and there we have it So if we want it to be a string, when we're using an expression, we need to have quotes on either side. Now, when we print out C, it's going to literally print out A plus B. Okay. The next message box we're going to look at is the way of forcing a expression inside of the message box. So let's say we didn't let's remove these here so now C equals the variable a plus the variable B but what if we didn't want to have the variable C what if C it's we only need it this one time and after that we're done with it so we can get rid of this this variable C by doing it in our message box instead which will save memory for our computer. So the way we're going to do that is we're just going to put this time we're going to put a single percent mark and then make sure that we have a space beside it and now what we can do is A plus B and that's it. And now we have the same answer that we had for our original one except we could completely erase the variable C now because we've done the express the math inside of our message box okay now the pro with this one here we can still do all the other things that we do with the other mo message box but we have to use different we have to be careful with um, anything that's not in quotation marks is going to be considered a variable and if that variable doesn't exist we're going to have some problems so if we want to have text we need to put our text inside of quotation marks and we also have to play around with its spacing to get it to look right so for example let's see what this looks like so if you notice the word text is butted right up against the last digit in our variable so to get that space in there we would have to play around and get it like that Okay, I think that's it for this one. I'll uh, see you guys on the next video.